Hello, today we're having a look at the JE Thunder Dock. This is, uh, this is the 7 Mini here, but uh, online they advertise it as a Thunder Dock 4 or a Thunder Dock 3 previously, but apparently it, this is actually a Thunder Dock, a Thunderbolt 3 dock because it uses the Intel JHL 7440 instead of the 8440. But both are 40 gigabits per second, so there shouldn't be too many differences. Um, here are some other things I bought, type A to C adapters. Here's the device itself. Input Thunderbolt. Quality of the printing isn't that great, but. So, core features of this. It's got a upstream and a downstream Thunderbolt port, I think. This is for power input, and there's a fan in there. That's an intake, and it comes out of here. Has 10 gigabit uh, USB A 3.2 Gen 2, and an 8K DisplayPort 1.4 connection. In the box, we have a thermal pad for the SSD. Oh, and it has an NVMe port internal. We have uh, rubber feet and a Thunderbolt cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable. And it has a screwdriver for opening it. Let's see the, let's bring over a scale and see what the weight of this is. I guess we'll just open it. There's two screws in the bottom. They are, as promised, um, machined. So they have a nice texture on them. They are approximately 16 millimeters long. And these look like M2. I'll check later. Way to get that out. Oh, there you go. So that might take a little bit of pulling if there's a thermal pad on here. The SSD. SSD goes there. Um, and you have this board inside. Let's take the board out. These look like they're five millimeters long or something. They're all the same. That's inside. Uh, this is actually kind of interesting. A little bit not what I was expecting. Um, so we have a fan here for cooling it. Here's a little, this looks like a fan controller. Is that glued to the top? Yeah, it's, this is double-sided taped to the top. That's soldered right onto that board. And here we have this interesting uh, card. This is probably the Thunderbolt controller under here. And those are two M2 ports used as... Um, you can see that's a power supply here. They're just using those pins as a power. So let's pull this card out. Let's see what's in here. Those are the same length as well. This card comes out, and here's the card in more detail. Some power signaling the other side, and that comes off. And there's a thermal pad. So there's a card. Let's see if we can. There's a Cypress chip. Can't really read that. JHL seven four four zero. There's an Intel logo on it. Huh. 
ARPCV. Yeah. It looks like a pretty reasonable layout. Kind of curious what's under there. Okay, I've gotten most of this uh, stuff off. It's incredibly difficult to rub off. Hopefully we can see numbers on the chips now. This looks like an SPI flash. It's a this is a P25Q8QH. That's what's under that. And that's the card. There's an unpopulated connector there. And you hear, of course, the Thunderbolt ports. Now, these do actually handle power, which is probably why they're using the uh, M2 ports. I think this one does 60 watts out. Let's have a closer look at the rest of the board. These look like uh, power supplies because that's power delivery input. So these look like um, power delivery stuff. These are just soldered on a little bit wonky. Here's your display port connection, USB. It's pretty typical. It just runs directly to the Thunderbolt controller. 2021, 03, 12, 01. There's really not tons going on on this side of the board. Over here we have a LDR6322. This is miscellaneous logic, I guess. Thing too notable. See if we can get a shot with everything. Let's turn our attention to the fan side of things. Does this chip have a marking on it at all? It does not appear like it. So there is an unmarked chip here. That's a fan. Interestingly, the speed control, sig the speed sensor signal is actually used for something here. Power looks like it's going in here. So this is probably doing PWM of some sort to control the fan. That looks like a thermistor. And some LEDs on here. Overall, it does look like this is a. This is kind of a neat way to do it. Uh, they claim it uses a PWM smartphone. Oh, okay. So, so this is actually a PWM signal, not a speed uh, sensor signal. It's connected to the P line here, not the F. Well, that's interesting. Okay. So it's got a typical fan in it. It's interesting that they didn't put the fan control on this board. They put it on its own little board. And the fan comes out. Looks like a typical notebook fan. There's not much to it. It's taped shut. To unclip it. Comes out. So, cute little sleeve bearing fan. Four poles. It's a really thin and small fan, actually. <coughs> Or something like this. Roughly 35, probably. Roughly. It's not very thick, not at all. It's maybe five millimeters, 
four. So there's a slot right through the casing here, so air is free to leave and it intakes here. So it looks like this fan is actually mostly to cool the um, Thunderbolt chip because the Thunderbolt chip sort of sits like this here and that's sort of in that case. So the air comes in near the ports, cools this heat sink and it just comes right out the fan. It doesn't really cool the SSD, which is actually heat sink to this plate. So if the SSD gets really hot, I guess presumably this plate would transfer it to the case and it would sort of cool it down a little bit, which is sort of interesting. Uh, I would have expected the SSD to actually uh, be the what the fan was mostly cooling. Looks like none of the airflow actually touches the SSD at all because this is sort of blocking the entire casing. This is definitely a CNC thing. There's a bunch of these. Is that one piece? There's a bunch of these screw bosses in here. A little air channel for the fan. It's kind of a nice... This is nice and thick. I guess the finish is not uh, the best, but it's good enough. Okay, so this is actually a pre-cut sheet of all these little squares. Maybe it's not designed to just go over the drive. Well, in that case, why don't we just um, pick a square and put it on the controller? Just to try it out. See, it's got these sort of cut for you in the squares, which is why it was so hard to peel off properly. This is going to actually contact the case. Oh yeah, I'd say that's a that's it's contacting. Yep, I'd say that's making contact. That's good. I like that you get four feet, even though it only takes two, just in case you lose them or they fall off. Oh, this is kind of a pain. I sort of wonder, why didn't they pre-apply these? This is a little bit too long. That's wonderful. They're very slightly too long. Um, is that because I stretched it by accident or is it just too long? Ah, so if you stretch it even a little bit, it's too long. Well, that's uh, not particularly helpful. Um, that might be why they included four of them. If you stretch them at all, then they won't fit. Okay. Okay, I did manage to get them on. The way you do this is you sort of take them off like this, sort of horizontally, and you line them up like sort of like that. You push them against the edge, you line the edges up, and then you sort of gingerly get the edges down and you just smooth it out there. That's how you get them in without stretching them, um, like the first one. So, I have it plugged into the Mac Mini M1 right now. Um, it does absolutely nothing if you just plug in a Thunderbolt port. So, you cannot use this with the phone or something as a portable SSD standalone. It will not do anything. You have to plug in power. Okay, so you plug it in, this is just power, and this terrible blue LED comes on, there's no lens in there. Okay, so this is kind of weird. It glitches the power meter as soon as you plug in the stop. Okay, so it doesn't play well with the PD power meter, so we have to use this 
AC power meter. Just not just plugged into power, not doing anything. It's only pulling about one watt. Plug something in, and plug the computer in. And now we're up to six watts. I wonder how much of that is the SSD. Here it's just plugged in with the SSD taken out. And we're pulling about two and a half watts. So the SSD is responsible for about half the power of this thing. After filming most of this video, I sort of forgot about it for about half a year. Um, here we are about half a year later. Um, just to fill in on some of the parts that were missing. Um, here I've got it running. It's uh, I have the OS installed on it. I'm getting speeds of something around 1500 megabytes per second, both read and write. Um, I don't know how to benchmark the SSD properly. To be quite honest, it doesn't matter for my purposes. Also, the SSD that I put in probably impacts what kind of speeds you're getting. But uh, I am getting Thunderbolt 3 kind of speeds with it, so that's fine. I haven't had any problems with it. haven't tried the display port, but that one works. Um, Temperature-wise, right now it's sitting at about 35 C. Uh, yeah, right on top of it. I think the fan is running. Yeah, the fan is running, but I can't really hear it. It's not really producing any noise of note. Um, now, in the past, when I had this directly on a table, I think it got a bit warmer. Um, I still couldn't hear the fan, but that is something to note. Having it on this rack seems to have cooled it down. Also, I think I'm using a different SSD with it, too. So, um, as we can see from the power consumption figures, the SSD is quite an important part of the power draw. So if you want it to run cooler, you can always choose a, an SSD that's going to run a bit cooler. Either way, um, six months later, I'm still pretty happy with this product. I haven't had any notable problems with it. Um, I think there's a new version of it out now. I don't know how it compares. I think a lot of them are pretty similar, um, but yeah, that's about it for the Thunderdock, and I hope some of that information is of use to someone, and yeah, thanks for watching.